been almost exactly two weeks since that shocker of the news that the Delhi police had filed an FIR of sedition, no less, on the basis of a protest advocacy document, now known as the Toolkit, tweeted by the climate change activist Greta Thunberg, linking her tweet and the document to some sort of global conspiracy behind the violence on Republic Day. For two weeks, as the police began to ramp up its case and to make arrests of activists on the basis of this sensational credibility-stretching claim, there was no sign of the FIR, making it hard to comprehend the basis of the police charge. Given that a bare reading of the toolkit suggested nothing seditious, simply an assortment of different protest techniques, none of them calling for or inciting violence. Now, finally, the FIR has surfaced, and unsurprisingly, it does not tell us clearly how the toolkit amounts to sedition, instead relying on seemingly disconnected groups and events to link the toolkit to some sort of international violent conspiracy. The charges, as we mentioned, in the FIR are sedition, promoting enmity, criminal conspiracy, serious charges. But what about the proof? The FIR begins by naming the radical Sikh group called Six for Justice, but that has no link to the toolkit. It says an effort by banned terror organizations like Seek for Justice to disrupt Republic Day. But again, as we said, SFJ is not connected in any way to the toolkit, at least as of now. Is the FR equating harmless protest blueprints with sedition? Look at the quotes from the toolkit that it cites. In the FIR, people should stage protests outside embassies, send photos and videos in support of farmers, join the farmers parade on 26 January, a Twitter storm on 4th and 5th of February. All seemingly innocuous protest activities. It also talks about how the toolkit targets India's chai and yoga image and also refers to the Poetic Justice Foundation, a Canada-based organization that, according to the police, was being promoted by the material in the toolkit and a group that tends to create feelings of enmity. On the basis of all this, it goes on to make some fairly unsubstantiated allegations that the toolkit called for economic warfare against India and that it was calling for the targeting of certain regions of India to instigate enmity. And it's evident from the toolkit that the Red Fort violence was a conspiracy. Worryingly, the FIR also treats journalists and fact-checkers who be named in the toolkit as potential allies in the conspiracy. Now, just remember, these journalists and fact-checking websites were named in the toolkit as influencers to be tagged in tweets. But the police say that these people and these organizations have been named by the conspirators, that is, the accused, as potential allies in the plans to disrupt public order. Now, as if that wasn't enough, the police also has put out some off-the-record material today, which they claim further bolsters their claim of conspiracy. But again, if you look at it, it really makes you wonder how exactly this bolsters that claim. It talks about how in early December, a person called Puneet, a Canada-based activist, contacted activists here in India, Nikita and Shantanu, both of whom are wanted by the police. It again repeats the information in the FIR about farmers' protests planned on 4th and 5th February. On 6th December, the police claim a WhatsApp group was set up. On 9th January, a global day of action was declared. On 11th January, there was a Zoom meeting. On 17th January, there was another Zoom meeting. On 20th January, this group apparently decided that the toolkit needed to be finalized and shared. On the 21st of January, Shantanu joined the farmers' protest at Tikri. On 26th, which was the Global Day of Action, there was violence in Delhi. And then, and this is a somewhat odd claim by the police, they say that because they exercise restraint, because the police exercise restraint, the objectives of the protesters was not met. Go figure.